flooding has remained global and inevitable a phenomenon. And of course, Nigeria is also experiencing its own part of it. And that's why we're here today on this edition of uh, Weekend Files. So good evening and welcome to the program. As we are prepared to, for serious flooding in 2020, our program tonight takes a look at this flooding season in order to avoid the fire brigade approach. Now, when the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency held its maiden news conference in Abuja February 4th, it advised stakeholders to get ready for the 2020 flooding season. States and local governments in Nigeria in particular should begin to prepare for the inevitable 2020 flooding. The agency advised for removal of the structures that are within the flood plains and uh, let there be adequate drainage paths. Meanwhile, dozens of buildings have been damaged after more flash floods uh, took place in Lagos and other areas of the country, including uh, heavy flooding in Kwara, Akwaibom, and parts of Boron State. Since May 2020, over 102 local governments in 28 states fall within the highly probable flood risk areas while parts of 275 council areas in 36 states, including FCT, fall within the moderate probable flood risk areas. Now, what is being done to mitigate the expected 2020 flood in parts of Nigeria? Find out as we start this week's edition of Weekend File, your weekend companion. Our guest tonight is Clement Inze, the Director General of the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. My name is Kirian Umayo. Glad to have you on the show today. Next is the news. <laughs> President Muhammadu Buhari has assured African leaders to ensure the immediate actualization of the common African position on assets recovery as the continent celebrates anti-corruption day. In a letter to South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa, Chairman of African Union, the Nigerian leader asked for a rare commitment to the anti-corruption war by leaders on the continent to engender an integrated, prosperous and peaceful Africa, driven by its own citizens, representing a dynamic force in the international arena. Now, the president laments that uh, uh, massive corruption uh, being perpetrated across our national government and has created a huge governance deficit that has in turn created negative consequences. President Buhari in the letter suggests that the African Union has to go beyond the more annual celebration of the African Anti-Corruption Day by moving swiftly to operationalize the African common position on assets recovery by all member states. President Buhari commends African leaders and of course said that we must commit ourselves uh, to the very important task of reclaiming the continent from the vices of system corruption. Meanwhile, the presidency says a series of documented allegations were made against Ibrahim Magu while as the acting chairman of the EFCC uh, following a preliminary review of the allegations leveled against him and several other members of his staff. Uh, there were grounds for a detailed investigation to be conducted. But sadly, some persons see Mr. Magu's investigation as a signal that the fight against corruption is failing. And the presidency said such opinion is quite unfortunate and uh, they have uh, once again missed the boat. The statement adds that uh, there is no better indication that the fight is real and active than the will to investigate allegations in an open and transparent manner against those who have been charged to be custodians of this very system. Under President Buhari's administration, this is the mantra and the guiding principle. There are no sacred cows, and for those who think they have a halo over their heads, their days are also numbered. The presidency further observed that Mr. Magu was not immune and no other administration in the history of Nigeria would have moved to bring into the light and public domain such an allegation. All airports across the country are expected to reopen for operations from the 15th of this month while adhering strictly to safety and health protocols. 
The Minister of Navigation, Hadi Serika, said this in Kano while inspecting flights resumption at the Amino Kano International Airport. Benny Adams has that report. From Lagos to Abuja, Port Harcourt to Meduguri, Oweri and Kano. The story is the same. Air travels have resumed with the number of passengers on the increase as aircrafts land and take off with assurances. A similar feature in all the locations is the adherence to the application of the new normal to aviation. From flight arrival, ticketing and boarding, the rules apply. Passengers are expected to be at the airport three hours before flight takeoff. Use of face masks is compulsory. Hand washing and use of sanitizers is the norm, in addition to 1.5 to 2 meters physical distancing rule while standing, walking or sitting. The regular airport security checks are also in force. Oh, it is amazing so far. It is amazing so far. Yes, and I hope it continues this way. To avoid having crowds and making sure that the airlines depart promptly and the operations are efficient and staggered. Because if we have too much congestion in the airport, it will make it difficult for the rules to be followed. But otherwise, we are very pleased. We will resume our operations normally and all the air airports in Nigeria by the 15th, which they will all open, uh, we'll make sure that they are ready before we open. Anyone that is not ready, we are not in a hurry to risk people's lives. We'll keep it uh, closed until we are safe to open, then we open. On airfare, the minister insists the price is normal. See that the airfare are normal. There is uh, little or no increase because nothing changed within the cabin. The visit to Kano is to further show the commitment of the aviation authority towards the growth of the sector as the people of Kano look forward to the inauguration of a new complex of the Aminu Kano International Airport. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. Normal flights operations resumed at the domestic wing of the Port Harcourt International Airport or Magua with the first two flights from Lagos after months of inactivity due to COVID-19 lockdown. Kinsley Amajiri reports that the airport recorded an appreciable passenger traffic on the first day of resumption. Uh, economic activities uh, have uh, resumed at the Port Harcourt International Airport, the local wing here at Omagwa. Uh, from what we have observed, two airlines have so far arrived from Lagos. So far, from our observation, the uh, fiscal distancing protocols are strictly adhered to. The domestic operation has started. We are, we are going for, uh, forward in summary. The uh, social distancing was uh, observed. Uh, this time I paid almost 15% uh, more than I used to pay. The authorities at the airport have also made it uh, mandatory that if you don't have any business traveling, you are not allowed into the terminal building. Talking about those who escort their friends and relatives to the airport. Meanwhile, flight operations have also resumed at the Maiduguri International Airport. Paul in Kujer Vana takes a look at modalities put in place. With the exception of emergency and essential flight operations at the Meduguri International Airport for the past four months, the entire aviation industry was shut down due to COVID-19 pandemic until now after fulfillment of guidelines and requirements for safety measures. At every point in the launch and its vicinity, there was orderly management of human traffic while checking in and other preparations went on. It's very encouraging. It's very reassuring. People are complying. We are all complying. Uh, they're doing well. We've observed everything. Put water in place and the social distancing. So it's, it's, it's good. Though there was no physical distancing in the sitting arrangement inside the plane, other hygiene protocols against COVID-19 were keenly adhered to by the passengers and air crew. This is especially evident with everyone wearing a face mask and flight crew in safety clothing. Asman Airline was the first to land and elite passengers from Meduguri International Airport at 2.30 in the afternoon. In Meduguri, Paul Nkujevana, NTA News. Miwa Kato Sunwa from Owe reports that the uh, Sambakwa International Cargo Airport Owe has also commenced domestic flight operations.
Domestic flight operations resumed in earnest at Sambuk International Cargo Airport with all facilities in place and in accordance with the NCDC protocol. Passengers were made to pass through the screening tent for a temperature check before moving into the departure hall. Physical distancing was also observed while areas were properly marked to indicate space for each passenger to stand while waiting to board. The first flight at the airport landed about 8.42 a.m. Everything is very, very well uh, kept. We are maintaining social distancing. We are actually pleading that unauthorized personnel should not come to the airport at this point. Passengers are hopeful that the current effort will be sustained to ensure their safety. Ino Wereket Osunwa, NTA News. The Nigerian government has received a large consignment of medical equipment donated by the German government and the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, to strengthen Nigeria's flight of fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister of Health Dr. Osage Hanire took delivery of the supplies in Abuja on behalf of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Mitaira Iben Tessos more. So far, COVID-19 case standing in ECOWAS member states is more than 92,000 and more than 1,500 deaths recorded. Nigeria accounts for one-third of these confirmed cases in the sub-region and it's a hub for ECOWAS COVID-19 response to member states. President Muhammadu Buhari of the Federal Republic of Nigeria was appointed the champion coordinating the regional response. And I wish to express our gratitude to him for providing facilities. This include a warehouse for storing all procured medical commodities and plane to distribute them to ECOWAS member states. Nigeria's share of this consignment of medical equipment donated by the German government and WAHU, the sub-regional health institution, consists of ventilators, thousands of diagnostic test kits, medical gowns, locally produced hand sanitizers, and thousands of other personal protective equipment. Our health workers are toiling assiduously in the fields and in the hospitals to handle COVID-19 patients and I believe that the provision of these personal protective equipment and all others will generate even more peace of mind for them. The coronavirus is going to be with us for some time. Therefore, it's really important that we get into the habit of modifying our behavior. And we also commit to use everything presented to us judiciously in the response to this pandemic. Apart from these equipment, ECOWAS is also pledging technical support in training for health workers and risk communication to strengthen Nigeria's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. This medical warehouse in Jabi district of Abuja donated by the Nigerian government to ECOWAS will be a transit point for the storage and distribution of medical equipment to other ECOWAS countries to strengthen their response to the coronavirus pandemic. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NTA News. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, will trace and track any trafficker of Nigerians to any part of the world. Director General of the agency, Julie Oka Donley, said this when she received Temitobe Olamide Arowolo at the Namda Ziku International Airport, Abuja, a Nigerian lady who was falsely charged for murder in Lebanon. A Debola Brooklyn Sunday report. 31 years old Temitokwe Olami de Arowolo finds a way to Lebanon in search of a greener pasture. Her story changed when she became a domestic worker, and her employer several times attempted to rape her. In self-defense, the employer sustained injuries and she was charged to courts. Investigation reveals that Temitope Olamide Arowolo was sold into slavery in Lebanon. She spent over a year in prison on charges of attempted murder. It took the intervention of the National Assembly, NAPTIP and the International Organization for Migration to make her repatriation possible. 
We're happy to be back home. It hasn't, the whole issue hasn't come to an end because we really want to understand what happened in court back there in Lebanon. She has to be quarantined for two weeks. We will now uh, um, take her to the shelter, give her some psychosocial support because she's traumatized. So we have to counsel her and then rehabilitate her, empower her. You're allowed to travel abroad if you want to work. However, we will not tolerate traffickers taking any of our citizens abroad to suffer them. Temi Chokwe's experience, she said, is what she never wished for her enemy. I advise the other girls to stay here in Nigeria and try to make it the way the law can put them through because going outside there was like a hell. What I experienced in Lebanon. Mitokwe now wants the Lebanese government to be held responsible for the violation of her rights. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The AP's flight scheduled to depart London Heathrow to Abuja and Lagos on the 13th of July for the evacuation of stranded Nigerians has been rescheduled for 14th Tuesday. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama in his verified uh, Twitter handle indicates that uh, the rescheduling was due to landing clearance issues. However, AP's has contracted a partner to operate on its behalf. All right, the federal government is committed to providing the needed support to the armed forces to reach the country of all forms of work criminality. Minister of Defense Bashir Magashi reiterated this at the grand finale of activities marking 2020 Army Day celebration, holding at the Nigerian Army Special Super Camp 4 in Faskari, Kasana State. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports. The Nigerian Army Day celebration is an annual event that showcases its rich history, value and achievements. From a group of able youths assembled by Lieutenant John Glover in 1863, the Army has transformed into a formidable fighting force, developing some hardware, playing a leading role in both national and regional peacekeeping. Today, I am glad to note that the measures we took five years ago have contributed immensely to enhancing the efficiency of Nigerian Army resulting in improved security as witnessed in the Northeast and across the country. To consolidate on the gains of the military in ongoing international security operations, the Minister of Defense says the federal government will improve the welfare of serving and retired military personnel. That all our obligation shall be faithfully discharged to you. We will continue to demonstrate the political will and determination towards ensuring that insurgency and criminality are totally eradicated in our dear country. The grand finale featured presentation of Special Chief of the Army Staff Award for Excellence and Hard Work to seven officers and nine soldiers, while a book titled Compendium of Nigerian Army Transformation, Deborah Tai 2015 to 2020 was presented to the public. May I note that the Nigerian Army, a key service of our armed forces, has particularly demonstrated a remarkable sense of patriotism, professionalism, and competence. The 2020 Army Day is the 157th anniversary with the theme, Nigeria's Territorial Defense and Sovereignty imperative for Nigerian Army's sustainable training and operations. From the Nigerian Army Super Camp 4 in Faskari, Kassana State, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Some notable armed bandit leaders and several of their fighters have been neutralized in airstrikes executed by the air component of Operation Hadar Indaji in the Zamfara State section of the Kagara Forest. This was achieved on 9th July 2020, pursuant to human intelligence reports indicating that some armed bandits had uh, relocated with a large number of uh, Russell livestock from the Sokoto state side of the forest and set up camp in the Zamfara state portion of the forest. Intelligence uh, surveillance and uh, reconnaissance uh, missions also later confirmed the exact location of the camp. Accordingly, the air component dispatched Nigerian Air Force fighter jets and helicopter gunships to engage the location. The chief of the air staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, has commended the air component of Operation Hadar Indaji uh, for their professionalism and urged them 
to remain resolute in the conduct of airstrikes while continuing to provide close air support for ongoing ground operations in order to eradicate armed bandits. Senate Committee on Defense says that it will give the Defense Industries Corporation of Nigeria, Kaduna, the necessary support to enable it to achieve its goal and reduce the country's foreign exchange spendings on military hardware importation. Chairman of the committee, Aliu Magatakada Wamako, gave the assurance during the committee's oversight of new and reactivated produ production lines for military hardware production at the corporation in Kaduna. John Yaku reports. The committee visited Special Equipment Factory, Research Development Center, and Metallurgical Testing Laboratory, where ballistic vests and helmets, chemicals and explosives, as well as COVID-19 products units, among other items, are manufactured. Other activities of the corporation are production of small arms and ammunition, high-powered pistols, and refurbishing of alti guns, among others. Along that line, we are going with it that it is just all the support they request, military wise, and also in, in terms of pine their old, old age act of 1964 to give us a more freedom and liberty to work as a, as a, as a 20 percent century MD. The flagship of what we have done here, that is, even if we cannot tell you anything we've done to move that con to the pedestal that we can see in Africa, we are beginning to behave like a defense industry. The Senate Committee on Defense also visited Nigerian Defense Academy, Kaduna, where the commandant appealed to the committee to consider the peculiarity of the academy for intervention. We have a lot of uh, camps and exercises which consume a lot of ammunition, both blank and live rounds. This is the first visit of the committee to the NDA since the inauguration of the Ninth Senate in Kaduna, John Yaku. NTA News. Owner and the tenant of a three-story building at Freeman Street in Lagos Island are still in shock and mourning the death of the two, including a baby boy and property lost this Saturday morning when their boat collapsed on them while asleep. Eight of the occupants were rescued from the rubbles. Abolore Obara reports that the state building control agency premised or promised uh, the unfortunate incident uh, on the refusal of the occupants to relocate after the building failed integrity test. So, caved in right on the occupants who were deep asleep in their rooms. <laughs> Concerned neighbors alerted emergency responders whose proactiveness resulted in saving the lives of some of the occupants. I just heard a sound. I opened the door and also the building collapsed. I'm here also for access control. If the whole place is blocked in terms of traffic, vehicular traffic, it will be very, very, very difficult for intervention. What we have learned was that the landlord of the house had given quick notice to the occupants who were there before, and all of them left for renovation. And renovation have started. We, we learned, whether true or false, that uh, the developer took this affected family in. Director General, Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, LASEMA, Dr. Olufemi Oke Osoyi Tolu, again, we appealed to Lagos residents, especially landlords, to stop toiling with the lives of others by not adhering to safety measures on building construction. The building controlling agencies are going around. The fiscal planning are going around. What we are appealing to the good people of Lagos State is to abide with the rules and regulations so that this kind of occurrence will not occur again. Residents of Freeman Street will still have a reason to host LASEMA and other relevant government agencies again as most of the buildings have to pass integrity tests to escape demolition. In Lagos, Abolo Reogbara, NT News. President Muhammad Buhari congratulates uh, former Governor of River State Chief Rufus Ada George on the occasion of his 80th birthday as family, friends, political associates and well wishers celebrate the octogenarian who has been a great mentor to many quality leaders in the political landscape of our country. President Buhari prays Almighty God to grant the 
Peri Pelebo one of uh, of Krika, more years of good health and longevity to see change and transformation in his immediate community and the country he loves so dearly. This is We Can File on the network service of the NTA. Hydrological Services Agency predicts flood in parts of the country. Our guest is Clement Z, the Director General of the agency, who is of course standing by to talk about what is being done to mitigate the expected 2020 flood. Let's now take a short break. We will be back very shortly uh, when We Can File we continue. <music> I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss, and we share your grief. Why would the bank be removing somebody's money every uh, time like that? Mr. John. My neighbor. Yes, sir. Why are you rushing to like this? Can you imagine? I just sent money to my son. And I got a debit and a lot of 15 dollars from my bank as stamp duty. I am going to seek explanation from my bank because I made a transfer. Now post a letter. Hmm, Mr. John. Let me explain what stamp duty is. Stamp duty is not all about postage stamp matters. Oh. The 15 naira is a stamp duty levy charged by banks on customers who make transfers of 10,000 naira and above from one bank account to another bank account. And uh -huh. why should I pay stamp duty for my hard earned money? Mr. John, paying stamp duty levy is a civic duty for every patriotic citizen. The taxes we all pay are collected and used by the government to pay salaries and provide basic amenities for citizens. It's even easier to make stamp duty payments now. All you need to do as a taxpayer is to log on to the following www.stampduty.gov.ng or www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-stamping. By the way, Mr. John, it pays to pay your tax, you know. Oh, oh thank you very yes, much. Sir. Thank you, my daughter. You're welcome, my sir. My regards to your family. All right, sir. This broadcast is powered by FIRS, Federal Inland Revenue Service. Treat your family to a cereal that's made from the natural goodness of maize and soya protein and specially combined with Grain Smart, a smart combination of vitamins and iron. So that they have the right kind of energy to help them reach their full potential and turn the simple into amazing. Eat up and carry go because nothing do you. Golden Morn, make every day amazing. Nestle, good food, good life. Want access to all your favorite local and international shows wherever you go? Here's how. Head to showmatch.com and click try for free for 14 days. Enter your email and create password. Choose your plan and payment method that suits you and start watching. You just opened up a whole new world of non-stop entertainment. Stream online or download the Showmax app to watch on your mobile or tablet anywhere, anytime. Visit showmax.com now. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus, but we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. 
This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Welcome back. Flooding in Lagos can be described as the, an, an enemy of uh, progress because of its uh, damaging impact on road infrastructure, buildings and livelihoods. Jennifer Igwe in this report highlights the challenging effects of flood in a mega city like Lagos where roads and drainage channels are often overwhelmed by flood water. On this day, no rainfall. Oluwakemi, Olufumilayo and others in Adenowo Street in Kilo, under Suru Lere local government area, a flood-prone neighborhood in Lagos, are breathing a sigh of relief. They know that once the rains resume, the battle to fight back the unpleasant effects associated with flood will continue. We don't allow our children to come out. They are all indoors. But adults that want to go out, that miss his or her steps, fall into the gutter. Compounding the challenge of flooding in Kilo and Lawrence in Surulere is the dismal state of roads that are often too weak to stand the overwhelming impact of flooding. Poor drainage channels in Lagos exacerbates the challenge of bad roads. When it rains and the whole place gets flooded, road users go through very horrendous experiences. Any car that enters here will not come out again. As you can see, As people passing through this road, they are our means of market, market here. If rain should fall now, even this place I'm standing, you can't stand here. Drainage system is not working well. And uh, they didn't take care of the drainage. The state government's flood prevention and management plans include the silting and clearing of drainage channels, as well as construction of new ones, so that flood water can be discharged into canals and subsequently the lagoon and sea. The state government is presently working on 220, 222 secondary channels, out of which 146 have been completed across the state. Just as 46 primary channels are receiving attention presently. Although these measures are paid off in some parts of Lagos, where flash floods drain off hours after rainfall, in many flood-prone areas like Lawansin, Kilo, Ikate, in Surulere and others, where poor drainage exists, the relationship between flood water and potholes intensifies, wreaking havoc in its wake. <laughs> In Lagos, Jennifer Igwe, NTA News. Well, from Lafia, Achigle Makaji reports that uh, year in, year out, parts of Nigeria are devastated by flood, causing huge losses to infrastructure and socioeconomic lives of the people. Nigeria had experienced flooding over the years, leading to loss of lives and sources of livelihood and infrastructure. The Ogunpa flood, which occurred in Ibadan in 2011, led to about 25% loss of sources of livelihood. Similarly, were floods in the states along rivers Niger and Benue in 2012 and 2017. Apart from displacements, the health consequences and loss of farmlands, the threat flood poses to infrastructure such as power lines, bridges and roads have generated concerns. The presence of a river or a stream, as the case may be in any community, comes with it enormous benefit because of the critical role water plays in the life of a people. However, the flip side of it is when these water bodies start eroding their banks with devastating consequences, just as the one we have here on this bridge at Sabungida Bakun Kugi, a border community between Nasara State behind me and Plateau State. For the road users, being a major link between Nasarawa, Plateau and Taraba states, it is an emergency that requires urgent attention. It's a welcome development if the government can do it for us. For members of the community, the threat of cutting them off has grave economic consequences. If this bridge is being destroyed, honestly, people will find it very difficult to go to their farmland to cultivate. Lafia, the Nasarawa state capital, is not left out 
as the Amba River perennially overflows its banks. However, it is not all tales of gloom, as other areas with similar threats along Lafia Makudi roads, as well as Shabu, have started receiving attention from the federal government. The structure in a flood point area should be uh, the foundation. A structural engineer notes that it be the normal kind infrastructural of designs that for flood prone areas could take into cognizance such threats. We try to be uh, more proactive than reactive. The Nasara state government says um, proactive measures are, are being taken to mitigate effects of flood on the people. Experts opine that appropriate environmental impact assessments be carried out before the siting of any infrastructure in an area with history of flooding. In Lafia, Achi Glimagaji, NT News. And our guest is uh, Clement is, uh, the DG of Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. Once more, I would like to welcome you to Weekend File. Now let us know the, uh, the picture of uh, flooding across the country this year. Uh, thank you, Kirian. Um, the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, you know, is starting with, among other things, predicting flood issues in Nigeria. And we normally do it, come up publicly, the prediction. As it had to occur within the local government areas in Nigeria, we do it as early as possible before the onset of rainy season, tolerance of flooding time. From our prediction, which was made public in May, in the craft come earlier because of this uh, pandemic, says that no less than 102 LGS in Nigeria, cutting across 28 states, will be heavily impacted by flooding in 2020. And another 275 LGS that cut across the entire country with FCT will be also impacted. But 102 will be much more heavily impacted. And unfortunately, from what we have you know, seen here, it is turning out as predicted. We talked about Lafia, talked about Mushi, is there, which have been, was made public and then given to all the state governors in Nigeria that this is what we are expecting, this is what we have seen from our own prism in our forecast or prediction. Unfortunately, it's quite like it's coming through and so early in the year. Now, now, which states are of the red line, or, or red zone, so to speak, presently? You know, I mean, and we, we know Lagos, we know Ogun State, right? Uh, well, uh, perhaps uh, uh, Kogi, that's the local jail, for instance. Yes. You know, uh, then which, which other red zones do we have? Abia State, Rivers. The states that are, with, are contiguous to Rivers, Niger and Benue, like KB, Adamawa, Taraba, Benue, Niger State, and then down the um, the Niger Delta. Now you 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 engage in early um, prediction yes. right, uh, before the onset of the rain. Um, what uh, has been done by these states that you have allotted, especially the red zone states that you mentioned now? Uh, is there any mitigating or mitigation efforts being made in these states, you know, with respect to the expectation of the 2020 flooding, for instance? Okay, going back a little bit, because of the pandemic we have, this COVID-19 pandemic, we couldn't carry out our sensitization exercise from zone to zone. But the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, you know, dispatched, endorsed and dispatched documents where detailed to each of the governors in Nigeria, including the Minister of FCT, highlighting the local government areas in their own respective states, you know, that will be impacted heavily by flooding in 2020. And recommendations were made what they should do. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like anything is being done as expected because much attention has been taken over by the COVID-19 issue. So, however, Lagos State began early. I watched the, governor, the Commissioner for Environment, Tunji Bello, from time to time on the field with a special advisor on sewage, or oh, sorry, uh, drainage and water resources in the same state, always on the field as, as early as February. But it's like COVID-19 came up. It, it looks like nothing 
you know, was being done as early as possible. All right. Uh, are we expecting any release of uh, water from the uh, Lagdo Dam in Cameroon or any other dam uh, that could uh, affect Nigeria, uh, Nigeria's rivers, you know, adversely? No. Currently, the flooding we're experiencing you know, results from local rainfall. You may call it a flash flood or urban flooding. Okay. And maybe in Lagos and Ogun, river flooding from the Oyan Dam. As we progress further, river flooding will set in because of Nigeria's location within what we call Niger Basin. A basin, each of us has a water, you know, water basin in our homes. There is a basin which we call Niger Basin, or Niger basin mm -hmm. cut across nine countries in the West and Central Africa. River Niger takes off its core from a a few highlands in Guinea, traversing through Mali, Niger, Benin Republic, and then Côte d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso. They all flow into River Niger, West Africa. Then the Central Africa, you have Cameroon, where the Benue starts from, and then Chad flows into River Benue. Now, this usually congregates in Nigeria, the flooding from all these countries from late July, August, September. So it's become so worrisome that as early as June, June, flooding has already started. Now to your question, we can't say whether they will release water from Cameroon, like the dam, like last year, when the rains have ceased in Nigeria in October, I mean drastically for the northern part of Nigeria. And when I was assured by my, my friend or colleague in Cameroon that the rainfall will cease first week of October, it rained heavily in Cameroon to the point that on the 10th of October last year, the Lagdo Dam was overwhelmed. It's about 6.7.6 billion cubic meters of water, the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon, that they were forced to open their dam on the 10th of October. And it was open to the end of October, 21 days. When we are saying Uhuru, that there was no more flood in Nigeria, Adama was flooded. Taraba, Benue, and of course, Kogi State. So to answer your question, we can't say whether Cameroon will release down from a Lagdo Dam or not, where it is too early to that. Okay. Well, thank you for now. Let's take a short break. Uh, when we come back, our conversation continues. This is Weekend File. We're taking a short break. You see, as I talk to you plenty now, now because I get glued to I make me the talk. Please, I'll be not be so. All right. You say I won't talk plenty. Una no say say I no dey lie. You see this glow? If you get them, una no go even una go just dey talk dey go because it's not dear. Enjoy international calls from as low as forty cobble per second from Niger to the world. Call your loved ones today. Thank you, my sister. You do well, eh? No. Every house has its own rules, but in this house, rules can be deceiving. Follow them, bend them, break them, make them. The house can't win if you beat it at its own game. Play your cards right. Be heard. Be seen. Change perception. Expose the players, reveal the drama, the passion, the charm, the deceit. All eyes are on you, but keep your eye on the prize. Run the risk, take the house. Only one king or queen will ace the game on Big Brother Ninja. Season 5 starts 19th of July, 7 p.m. on DSTV Channel 198 and Go TV Channel 29. Headline sponsor, Betway, Goat Sponsor, Guinness, rated 80. Now believe this Koroti. You know if you touch black man, if you like, gather the whole Niger, come together, make a cough. <laughs> Nothing. Which one you want? Give me V and D. Uh -huh. I beg, get small pieces. How much you want to give him? Give me 200. <coughs> Take your change now, will you? You know what your change is? My people, this coronavirus, na serious matter, me will not wash your hands regularly. Come use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. If you don't see water, wash your hand, oh, make you not sit down for house. You see this virus, oh, you no get leg. Now we the waka kuru kere. 
No walk around, make the virus for die. No forget, say, the betterment of our people. Now for your handy day. This message is from the Akin Fadei Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation. ICPC and NTA say you can help Nigeria to flatten the curve on COVID-19 just as you can help flatten the curve on corruption. Follow transparency, accountability, and integrity just as you follow health guidelines. Stay home with integrity and maintain your distance from corruption just as you stay away from COVID-19 by maintaining social distance. Report every act of corruption to ICPC just as you report COVID-19 to NCDC. Stay away from corruption. Stay safe from COVID-19. Report any act of corruption to ICPC on toll-free number 0800-2255-4272. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. The perennial flooding during the rainy season in Abukuta, the Ogun state capital, has reached an unacceptable level, causing severe socioeconomic, ecological, and environmental impact on people and public infrastructure. Now, to mitigate this, the state government and the affected communities have reached an agreement to demolish permanent structures on floodplains as a permanent solution to end the menace. Denny Taiwo reports. The July 4 downpour and the flash flood that ravaged part of Abakuta was the first major incident since the onset of the rainy season. This year, Abakuta has about 10 flood prone areas with Ije Untitu, Ijeja, Isaleo Jakuto, Ijaye, Amolasho, and few communities built along the bank of Ogun River, West East as flood destroyed personal property of residents and washed away covered and road surfaces along its path. The property that was damaging every year is our problem. Most of the houses from Isalek building to this place have been... Isaloja Kuto is one of the scenes of the recent flash flood in Abakuta, the state capital. The state governor, Prince Dakwabiodu, has paid an on-site inspection visit to this place and palliative work have commenced to make the road passable for road users in the meantime. Apart from regular desilting of blocked water channels, expanding narrow flood drains to accommodate run of water and building new bridges, demolition of some permanent structures built on floodplains is also an option already. Some of the affected residential buildings have been deserted in the wake of persistent disaster. Any building that beside the gutter needs to be demolished. At least for them to be able to find a permanent solution to this. So all this thing now has to be removed. If you want to expand the back of this river, all this ones shouldn't be there. We can now allow two, three people to jeopardize the general interest of thousands of people. Some critical structures that are blocking the drainages, which you have witnessed yourself, may have to give way. Every rainfall still expected as the rainy season peaks. Environmental experts want residents to desist from indiscriminate dumping of refuse in drainages to avoid future reoccurrence in Abakuta. Adini Itaewo, NTN News. All right, uh, let's return to our discussion desk. I'm still with uh, Clement Nze, the DG of uh, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. Uh, what's your advice to states, uh, state and local government areas? Because um, invariably, um, when flood comes, it attacks uh, not just the urban area, but also the rural community, who may not really have uh, the, the wherewithal, you know, to, to, to help themselves. Uh, so in this connection, uh, what's your advice to local and state authorities on the incident of, uh, of flooding? No, Kirian, from what we have seen on the, on the, from the video clip, saying that Jokuta is like medicine after death. The rain is already here, the flood is already here. You can't do any remedial work on the, maybe the, the bridges, the covers, and so on and so forth. It's not easy to be done now. We know that this is, so long as the rain 
keeps falling. When the time comes, there must be flood. But it is when the drainage part or the, the part of the, uh, the flood is compromised by human beings that we talk about flooding seed and destructions. The best time to do work to clear the drainages, construct sand bridges, like that of Abiyoku, they mentioned it some time ago, that the bridge had a problem. Instead of removing it completely to, you know, to reconstruct, they had to repair. It also happened in Oyo State too. We encourage or advise state governments. Each of them has set Minister of Environment, set Minister of Water Resources, Town Planning Authorities. They should commence the demolition of structures that are interfering with the flood parts, especially during the dry season. Clear the drainages. Don't allow when the floods have already set in. Now you begin to do so which wash kind of a job. Earlier enough, the states were informed. And they know they know all this. They should be able to summon that political way. Somebody was talking the other time and said that maybe it is only Abuja where the minister does not go for election. That could summon the, the, the political will to remove structures. Like last year, about 500 houses were removed in Abuja. We had demolished in Abuja in 2019. About 500 houses were demolished. But can that be done at the state level? One officer is saying there that how can two people endanger the life of thousands by putting structures within the flood plain? We know the flood parts. Again, we have what we call state emergency management agencies in the states. Unfortunately, it seems to exist just on paper for some states, where maybe you have one person, two, three people drafted from one place or the other to be manning that agency, which is very, very vital in this issue of uh, flooding. Okay, now you advise to Nigerian farmers who may also um, have issues uh, with the flood. I was in Kogi State, I think, 2018, and we saw that people were forced to begin to harvest because early the crop could not mature. But because of flooding incident, to lose their crops, they had to begin to harvest. And there was a lot of losses when that's of crops and so on. So they should be expecting that more flood will still come. We are not yet into it. We are yet to get into the middle of uh, July. August is there. September, September. the peak is, is there. there. So more flood will still be coming to Nigeria. All right. Uh, let's uh, appreciate you for being here uh, today. Well, you're always around when we call on you. Uh, it is your season, so yes. uh, you can afford to help you. Thank you indeed for, for being here. Thank you, Kirian. All right. Uh, Mr. Clement is the Director General of uh, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. Now let's take a short break. Don't wait till ya! Now you don't shell it all. See us then they go to the left, to the right. The defender stand down for ground. Go fight to conquer. Plenty things full ground for you. He not the sweepers like this so. No feeling be like this at all. To conquer excitement inside football action. For Go TV, entertainment is not a sweet pass to watch. Connect live action for La Liga, Serie A, Premier League, and WWE. I see the hot. He don't settle. Get Go TV today for 9,200 naira. Where they come with one month Go TV Max subscription to enjoy correct sports with the super sports. Go TV, live it, love it. The number of the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria is increasing daily with many more tests ongoing. The battle of testing, isolating, treating, and attending to the affected persons rests heavily on the shoulders of our health workers, constantly putting their lives on the line and at risk to contain this virus, save and protect the lives of millions of Nigerians. To these health workers, we at the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, on behalf of millions of Nigerians, say a big thank you for all that you have done and are doing to the security agencies enforcing the lockdown and every other frontliner. We say thank you for putting your lives on the line to save ours. 
There is no amount of words that can quantify our gratitude. Thank you. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. And now let's take uh, some sports news. The Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, has reiterated his commitment towards bringing the national stadium to really Lagos back to life. The minister who disclosed this on the Frontline Sports Program, the Sports Parliament on NTA said that they require a process to turn the national monument into a world-class multipurpose sports center 